This week we're going to look at penetration, particularly moving from midfield to final third. Penetration is one of our principles, and the principle is how we're going to accomplish our goal. As a refresher, our attack principles are penetration, patience, positioning, protection, and pace. When we talk about penetration, we ask ourselves, can we go forward? We need to have a forward-thinking mentality. Our eyes are up and our body is open. We must understand there are multiple solutions to go forward. Three ways we can penetrate. With the dribble, with the pass, and with the shot. As a review, we want to go forward. We want to put pressure on the opponent. We want to eliminate the opponent to advance into goal scoring areas and to penetrate we need space, opportunity, and, and advanced support players. So now we're going to get into some of the aspects from moving from not just the back but from the middle to the final third. So now we're playing in the middle of the field and we're looking to play into the final area of the field. One aspect that's going to be very important for us is to have support or the second layer of attackers. We have support, that means we have options. And we need supporting players to be playing at different angles and different distances. Diamonds and triangles are the most effective forms of support. As you can see here, as Bayern Munich from back in 2015 is playing, they have support all around the field with most of the play linking into Philip Lahm in the middle. But notice all the diamonds and triangles that are created by all the players in a very compact area. They have passing lines and space creation where they can advance into different areas. Width is also a major key to moving from the back to the middle to the final area of the field. Width creates the greatest available space. It maximizes our passing options. It increases time and reduces pressure. Defending teams want compactness, and width kills compactness. It's the opposite of compactness. But it also provides opportunities for one versus ones, combinations, overlaps, and underlaps. Movement is also a key aspect to moving from the back to middle to final area. Mobility we will refer to as movement and space creating. And the timing is the greatest aspect when we're doing our movements. Are we too early? Are we too late? Did we move at all? We must understand the cues of the player on the ball and the cues of the defenders and our teammates to understand when to move. Two types of movements that we'll look at is a Velcroing movement that you'll see over to the left. The blue nine runs away to drag a defender, which opens space for the blue seven in the second picture. Elusive movement can be movement to get open or to elude players. So as 11 is near the purple 2, he moves wide to create open space for him or herself. Here's a clip from Villarreal a few years ago that incorporates movement, width, and support in the penetration principle. <laughs> Ну, как минимум, третья, да? Да. Поскольку две было а, показано буквально несколько минут назад. Сена, назад, Бруно, Сена. Как прессингует сейчас Валенсия, а? Ну, как, как прессингует Валенсия, а посмотри, как играет в одно касание Велирио. Ой-ой-ой, а? Ай, красавцы! So questions we need to start asking ourselves. Does the area of the field matter? If we've been working on building out of the back, in the back third, does it matter when we get into the middle third and then the final third? And the answer is yes, the areas of the field absolutely matter. So some aspects that we'll look at from building from the back. We want to create space and we want to have patience but also protection. When we build from the back we want to try to maximize the width and have positioning that's appropriate for when we need to defend if we lose the ball. Simplicity is needed out of the back, and we don't want to have risky, risky passes, meaning we're going to play into an area that's very congested that may lead to a counterattacking opportunity for the opponent. 
but we need to have constant support. But ideally, when we build from the back, we want to look to play the highest player possible that's faced forward. As we move into the middle third, we're going to look to start creating a little bit more. So looking to combine with three player movements, having rotations and interchanges between players, losing our individual marks with that Velcro or elusive movement, but having a constant support and advancing as a group. Advancing as a group is important because if we lose the ball, we have an opportunity to regain the ball. But receiving to play forward, bypassing defenders with the pass, switching the point of attack, and then ultimately always having that protection behind the ball in case we lose it. That's going to be key in this area of the field as we start looking to get into the final area where we're going to score the majority of our goals. And in the final area, we're looking at creating chances. So we're looking for passes that break lines, meaning passes that are played beyond the opponent. And we're looking for runs that break lines or runs that are made beyond an opponent. Our spacing and positioning is really important in this area, and we must have the protection to rewin possession in case we lose it. We want to have a mentality to create chances, but we also need to have a mentality to finish chances. We might get somebody that's in the wide area that's looking to serve the ball, but we're going to need a person to get on the end of that ball. So do we have the mentality of a player to look to create for somebody else, but do we also have players with mentalities to run and do the, the hard work to score goals or keep plays alive? We also in this area need to have patience to restart the attack. If we're not able to create a good goal scoring opportunity, we should switch the ball, move it backwards, and recirculate and restart our build and creating more chances. Lastly, we want to look for opportunities to play two versus one, one versus one, or one versus zero. So be mindful of your spacing. Is your spacing creating opportunities to play two versus one, one versus one, or one versus none? Or are you just clogging areas up? Most of the games that I watched this weekend, we are clogging areas up. If we can get our key players, one versus one, in key areas of the field, we're going to have more success. So be mindful of that. Here's a clip from a few years ago of Borussia Dortmund, applying all the principles we talk about. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to contact one of your coaches or one of our directors.